Dear Santa, Hi, I just started painting my lures for fun and wanted to paint something cool. My wife had the idea of a monarch butterfly, and I'm trying to wrap my head around how to accomplish this paint scheme. I would love to see how you would paint one. Okay, let's paint a monarch butterfly. This is a really cool magazine. It comes out every couple of months. It's like a bi bi monthly, and um, I read it. I read it cover to cover every every month that I, I get it. Dropped a nice one, both of them. Very cool. So yeah, it's got tidbits on fishing and wildlife and conservation and sustainability and. In the fall and winter, it's all, well, it's, I wouldn't say it's all hunting, but there's a lot of duck hunting and deer hunting and the like. But, uh, yeah, pretty cool. If you're in Arkansas or thereabouts in the Ozarks, uh, subscribing to this helps the Arkansas Game and Fish Commission, AGFC. So, just so you know. So I'm finally coming out of my turkey coma. and um, decided that it's time to get back in the swing of things and give you guys a, God, there's so much turkey. Although, went to Colton Steakhouse last night. Really good. So if you guys wanna play along, now would be the time to take a look in the top right-hand part of your screen where it's always fun. Um, today we're gonna do something that, you know, I. <laughs> I would normally say let's not do a square bill or anything diving. Could probably do this on a top water. However, for the pattern itself, I want the wings to come down on both sides. The spine is going to be black. And if you're looking at the monarch butterfly now, if you'll play along with me, it's a really cool color scheme. It's and it's and it's a winning color scheme for bass fishing. So you've got black, orange with white dots. Can almost mimic a craw, which you know that excites me anytime you say crawfish. Jenny gets excited. So we're gonna start with a black base today, and then we're gonna add the color scheme into it. And I think I want to use these Dinger S's because I think we're gonna be able to do more than just top water. If you look at what a butterfly does, it's gonna fall in the spring and in the fall and the autumn, they're gonna probably fall on top of the water. And it almost makes me think of the woolly bear pattern. You're only gonna see them a, f a little few months out of the year, so this is probably considered a seasonal pattern. But one thing that I wanna do, and I just can't get enough of this, if you look at the pattern on that monarch butterfly, this is pretty much it. This is a placemat, folks. Go to Hobby Lobby, go to Michael's. I have a link somewhere, but somebody said that there wasn't any left in stock. There was like 19 of them. There's a couple of different patterns of this, but I'm going to I'm going to look for I'm going to look for another placemat for you guys. These are placemats. I've just put them I've cut them into segments and I'm probably going to cut this one down a little bit smaller today. I'm pretty sure I got an email and I got a message. So uh, you definitely want the pattern done, and I'm really, it's something I haven't done yet, and I love doing stuff that I haven't done yet, so good on you, and excellent idea from your wife. So to Kyle Embry's wife, thanks for the concept. We're going to start out with this black today. And we're going to make sure that we coat it really well, and then we're going to heat set it. I think in itself, it shouldn't be too difficult of a pattern to pull off as long as you have this placemat. I mean, it's just a perfect placemat to get the pattern done. And then we're going to build some segments on the back to represent the segments going down the middle of the, the uh, butterfly and add some detailed white lines on those. And then the only other thing that we're really going to have to deal with, contend with, is how to get the segments even from side to side. So if you're following me here, 
the pattern is going to kind of come like this on one side and we'll flip it over and do it like this on the other side. Kind of like that. And then this part here is going to be coming down the spine with the face up forward and the tail like that. So I think I've decided what I want to do in here so that we can kind of get it kind of close on both sides is notch this in. So I'm going to take a small pair of scissors. I kind of want a little bit bigger. I think we'll go in right here. Just get rid of that. Maybe notch in just a little bit further. That way there's no doubt that we can come across and actually I like that very much. Now to put the uh, black base on, I was running about 40 PSI. I have now pulled back to just under 20. I might go back just a little bit more, right around 15. We're going to do opaque white. And we need to be careful when we're putting this on because we, we don't want it to, we don't want it kind of to go under and bleed. We want to come in at an angle here. You know, that makes me think that I want to do one more thing and pull this back like this since we're angling so that that way that's perfect. You guys see what I just did here? I cut just a little bit of an angle out so that this can rest a little bit better up against here on this lip. And then I'm just, because this is pliable, I'm just going to kind of hold my hand. I'm going to angle it up just a little bit so you guys can see what I'm doing a little bit better. Now I might even be able to get away with clipping this along the back end. Let's see here. Obviously I've never tried to do this pattern before. This is a brand new build. But I like challenges like this. I almost consider these a challenge. When you guys give me off the wall stuff to spray, I like it. Because it makes me think. And if you're not challenging yourself and you've hit that plateau, doing new things, thinking out of the box, is one way to really achieve that next level thinking. That might do it. And what I'm going to have to do here, and realizing all at once that I've put in too much white, I'm going to do one side at a time. And by that I mean, get some of that out, bring it back down. I'm going to do white and then orange with this on one side instead of doing white and then flipping it because I really want to make sure I line this up correctly the next time. So that's going to be a variable in this. And I really just want to, I don't want to angle this because I want to get a top-down approach and I want to fill these openings as evenly as I can. And the cool thing about doing it this way and adding a little bit of white before we get the orange in is that if I do need to come back and re-detail 
it'll be easy to put black over top of everything if I if I have a little bit of a a bleed through on this but I think we'll be okay if you guys are like me when I was a kid I used to chase butterflies and occasionally I get lucky and catch them I never went out out after them with a net but I would chase them and you guys will notice that they have that real powdery talc like substance on their wings which also really hampers their ability to fly when their wings are wet or when kids hands get on them of course you don't find that out until you're much older but because of that substance I'm choosing pearl tangerine instead of a base fluorescent and then after that after we're finished both sides the final is going to be this pearlescent but that should do and now we're going to heat set that side one you know what let's make this easier on me there we go I don't need all of this get rid of that should be able to control the spray here these vinyl placemats can be a bit unruly so just take your time come down at a 90 degree angle just straight over top of your lure whenever I clean my chamber I always have to make sure that I'm turning my pressure back down when I'm spraying detail and just remember to hit this at a 90 degree angle we should be all right that should do it if you notice there's a the area on both sides of the body itself is light in color and not dark so we need to kind of mimic that on here we'll lay this on the other side this don't worry still gonna be okay here just a little bit now from this part of the body right here which would be this part of the body right here we need one black line going back go ahead and darken in the eyes again I'm 
So lay in the bottom here. Carve just a little bit of a round pattern that's going to represent the outlines of the wings. And then we'll do the same thing on this other segment. And what we're doing, we do the base first and then we're laying in the outline as we go. And now the same thing on this side. Bring it over and repeat. Once more, I'm going to pull the X-Acto knife out and I'm just going to make a little taper area. Doesn't have to be perfect. But it does need to go over this. So we want to bring it back just a little bit. We want to get that black back into the body here. We want to give this a proper heat set. So on this next part, I've chosen to hand detail in the dots and the segment pieces on the body. I just have a little bit of opaque white here in a cup. We'll start with the back and we're going to work our way forward. Just add these segments in. Slow one stroke. It doesn't have to be perfect. And you'll notice on the bottom here, there are some dots. So we can start laying those in. And these can be completely random. Make sure you keep enough paint on the tip of this brush. And we'll just work our way around the edges. And this is going to simulate the back of this wing all the way around the bottom. And you can alternate between one and two. Or if you go a little crazy, do a group of three. And this is one of those patterns, folks, where the devil is in the details. And you can have a very simple base pattern, but when you lay in just a couple of things, like this main stripe that we've got going on here, you lay that in, and then you start doing your detailing around the edges. Boy, oh boy, does this pattern really come to life. So now we're going to do the same exact thing on the other side here bring this up so you can see it. Probably be helpful. Still recovering from my turkey coma. And 
and then just do the same daggum thing down the other side of this lure. Just add a couple pieces in here and there just to better represent the edge of this wing. So before we put eyes on this thing, I went ahead and heat set off camera, but we're going to add a little pearl essence because if you guys have ever dealt with butterflies or any kind of winged creature, they have that beautiful, beautiful pearl essence. So we're just going to pearl it up because it'll look so pretty once that clear coat's on it. So, so pretty. There we go. Get a heat set real quick before it dries because this stuff is so thin it has a tendency to run and drip a little bit. So we really want to make sure that this is good and dry before we put these eyes on. What are you doing, boy? This is my cat that thinks he's a dog. He plays like a dog. You guys have seen the three dogs but there's also two cats here too because we just like having a zoo yeah and because the bottom of this is black we're going to use this white paint and this tiny detail brush to add my initials ta-da eyes. Now we have some reflective chrome eyes. Thank you, John at Jetson. The front chrome reflective eyes from Jetson. Lure eyes along the base. And we have ourselves a monarch butterfly. Well, that's going to about wrap up today's spray session. This is my interpretation of the monarch butterfly. I hope I've been able to teach you guys a couple of things as it's getting all happy and comfy in this KBS Diamond Strength Clear Coat. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. As always, it's good company. I'll leave the porch light on for you. And I hope you have a wonderful Christmas and holiday season this year. Cheers, many blessings. Happy casting from Jekyll Bates. Mm -hmm.